They're known as bolognese. It's comforting, it's delicious, it's heartwarming. It is love inside of one tiny bowl. But I'm sorry, Grandma, today your bolognese is out. Here is the thing about Whole30. It encourages you to eat whole foods. A whole food, simply put, has an ingredient of one, as you could probably guess from the name Whole30. So this is gonna have all the flavors of a traditional bolognese without any of the no-no ingredients. If you wanna get all the tosh points for success, you have to have a rich, deep, beautiful flavor. You have to have a thick consistency. And last but not least, it has to have that beautiful glossy coat over it, all of which we can achieve within Whole30 parameters. So the first thing that we're gonna do actually is brown the meat. I'm gonna start with a little oil in the pan. I have two kinds of meat that are gonna go into my base, ground pork and ground beef. And don't crowd the pan. Crowding is the enemy of brown, crisp meat. I'm gonna add a little salt. I'm gonna let that do its browning thing. We're gonna finish up the vegetables that go inside. I prepped some of my vegetables already. We got our white onion, carrots, sage, parsley, and basil, and three cloves of chopped garlic. I'm gonna add some celery. The first round of meat is browned. It's looking crispy and delicious. I'm gonna take it out of the pan. Round two of the meat. I try to break up any of the clumps that are really large. I'm gonna add it onto my platter. And I do this step first because I want all the meaty goodness that's at the bottom of this pan to help season the vegetables. Got olive oil now in the base of the pan. First I start with onion and with a little bit of salt and uh, a few sprigs of parsley because that's just what happened. And you can see they're already kind of like picking up the color from the meat. Got our celery, carrots, garlic, and finally our three kinds of herbs. Parsley, sage, and basil. Give it a mix again. It looks mighty fine. Some more salt. Ah. Meat's gonna go back in. Combine, get it all nice and mixed together. So to this, I'm gonna add the last of our ingredients, which are crushed tomatoes. And remember, this is a meat sauce, not a tomato sauce. It doesn't need to be super tomato-y. Oh my goodness. And I'll add a touch more salt and some red pepper flakes. And then we'll add beef stock. This has come to a boil, so I'm gonna reduce it to a simmer. So we're gonna simmer our sauce for at least an hour. The longer you let it cook, the better it gets. It just gets more flavorful and richer and deeper and more awesome. So give it as much time as you've got. Always cook your bolognese without the lid on because we want it to be able to reduce. And sauce thick is These are spaghetti squash. All you have to do to these is scrape out the seeds. I find that a spoon is just the easiest way. See you later, seeds. A little bit of salt. I'm just a salt conveyor belt. Beep, 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 boop, boop, boop. Give them a little spice, red pepper flakes, olive oil. And this is my secret weapon, basil. Basil's gonna go into the cavity of all of our squash, and we're using this to basically perfume the squash as it cooks upside down. And putting them upside down, make sure that we steam them quickly and efficiently. And the other thing is we do a two-step cooking process. So we're gonna cook these squash cavity side down, as you see, for 40 minutes. And while those are cooking, I'm gonna finish up the sauce. We've got basil and parsley. Put them into a nice little bundle. I'm doing a pretty fine chop because I want this to really flavor the sauce but not be totally noticeable. Because bolognese looks good when it's like this deep red color. This is mainly just a visual thing. And then some more red pepper flakes. And we can't use red wine, but we can use red wine and vinegar, which if added at the end is gonna give it a nice hit of acidity. They're nicely browned all over. I'm gonna flip them over because they'll cool a little faster. 
and then shred. Get out all the deliciousness. You know, your squash is done when you stick a fork in it and if you pull on it, it kind of flakes away and makes pieces of angel hair. And we wanna go kind of al dente on them, a la noodle, not Sog City. To finish it, we're just gonna throw a little olive oil on top and, of course, some flaky sea salt. Pop these back in the oven. It's still at 425. So these should be caramely looking pieces. Get myself a nice swoop of squash. Who am I kidding? I want more. Put a healthy dollop right in the middle. And then to finish it off, although traditional ricotta is not on Whole30, I have found that at a lot of my health food stores, you can now get almond milk ricotta. So I'm gonna toss a little of that just to serve. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit more red pepper flakes. And I'll finish it with a piece of sage because I just am feeling fancy. Maybe a little pepper. Yes! Can you believe your eyes? This, my friends, is a Whole30 spaghetti squash bolognese. <sighs> this sauce is like rich and it's got a really like unctuous mouth feel, which is exactly what you want from a bolognese. Definitely it's got those slow cooked vibes. The spaghetti squash is al dente and also it's got that kind of glossy finish that you want in a sauce. So I am very, very, very happy. Thanks for hanging out with me, making some spaghetti squash. Sayonara. Or should I say, ciao, Bella.